Hey folks, David from Default Sound here, and today I'm gonna talk about one of the new features in Main Stage 3.3 that I am really excited about. The 3.3 update added new functionality to a couple of the MIDI effects that come with Main Stage. Uh, this unlocks a whole new level of automation that's never been possible in Main Stage before. So what I've done today is I've set up a few channel strips to demonstrate just a little bit of the potential uh, of what you can do using this new functionality. So let's take a look at it here. I've got just the stock Rhodes electric piano. And you can see here I've got several instances of modifier and then a couple instances of modulator. So it used to be that the modulator effect worked like this. Whoops, sorry, I'm gonna start with modifier, my fault. It looked like this. It allowed you to take an input MIDI event and reassign it to a different MIDI event. So I, I would use this to map um, the mod wheel to say volume. So then I could use my mod wheel to control the volume of a channel strip, which was really useful. But now uh, what, uh, the 3.3 update allows you to do is take any input event, any input MIDI event, and reassign it to any plugin parameter on that channel strip. This is huge. So it functions just like the map button does in the channel strip inspector when you're mapping to your layout. So you just select learn plugin parameter, and then you go to whatever plugin you want to assign to and then you just click. And now you can see how it is reassigned to silver verb modulation phase. So now, as I bring my mod wheel up and down, you can see I have this full sweep here, which is really cool. Um, so it allows you to map MIDI events and reassign them to parameter controls, which is really cool. Um, because now you can map uh, things like reverb, sends, and whatnot to your mod wheel without losing your modulation function, uh, which is nifty. So I'm going to close this one out because I have a couple examples already put together. So for the first example, I'll open up these two plugins. I have velocity reassigned to the silver verb wet. So it sounds like this right now with the modifier off. And then check out what happens when I turn this on. Now, if you are mapping to uh, something like your mod wheel or expression or sustain, you want to make sure that through is clicked so that it still sends through the regular MIDI event. Uh, otherwise, your sustain pedal wouldn't work if you were setting the input to sustain or your mod wheel wouldn't work if it was set to mod wheel. Uh, you can play around a little bit. There's not full transform control like there are is on the actual uh, mod wheel or whatever or velocity in the inspector, but you can still get some control over the amount of transformation. Uh, you can set, I have found the minimum level by playing around with this add. Um, so if you set the add, uh, then it won't go all the way down to zero. So if you just want a little bit of play, you can do that. And then you can set to the max using the scale percentage. This isn't as precise as the regular uh, transform options for MIDI mappings uh, or for uh, plug-in parameter mappings, but it's still uh, ballpark going to get you there. Uh, yeah, so that's the first uh, option here. And now second, I'm going to open up this guy. Uh, this is, again, just playing around with the reverb amount. Uh, but this one I've mapped to the mod wheel. 
So this is really cool. We've got completely dry piano. So that's really awesome. You're able to bring that in and out. You could do something like this. We could add a channel EQ and we could map this to the high cut frequency. And that would allow us to filter this. And if we wanted it to not be so extreme, we'd have to add some in so it didn't cut out everything. Again, it's a little more of a guessing game to get it dialed in just how you want. But it's super easy to do this now, and I am really excited about some of the possibilities. Uh, let me open up this third instance here. This one's pretty cool. Uh, here I have taken the input event, uh, which is sustain, and I have mapped it, or reassigned it, I'm sorry, to the freeze button within the tape delay plugin. Check out how this works. So we've got regular tape delay, but then when I press the sustain, And I'm able to toggle that freeze button on and it's just momentary so as soon as I release it goes away so you could actually set up kind of an infinite pad sort of thing uh, if you had a second keyboard and wanted to do a sustain pedal set up a second sustain you could just hold that if you wanted to And if you play around with the length of the delay, you can get different effects. You can modulate it, do some pretty cool stuff. Um, so that's really interesting, a really interesting possibility. I'm going to grab this pad and uh, demonstrate how it would sound with more of a... So then while that's holding... You can play over the top of it uh, with no issue, so it's really simple. So that's definitely an effect that wasn't possible before. Uh, that's really easy to do now. Stuff that used to be impossible or very difficult to do is now pretty straightforward. Uh, all right, now I'm going to move over to the second channel strip and demonstrate a couple of those same types of sounds. Uh, but with a pad instead. It's via velocity, that's right. Yeah, sorry about that. I got a little confused. Um, so you could, you know, map this really to anything that you wanted to. I mean, we could even put it on pitch bend. Um, if I can remember where pitch bend is. Oh, this is a little bit blurred MIDI. Pitch bend. Ha ha! really quickly just bend that in take it all the way out and it's defaulting to the middle but you could adjust that default position using add or subtract if you wanted to start with a little less so you can map this to anything really and I'm just using reverb because it's an easy example but okay I'm gonna open up this next one here uh, and again this is uh, still using reverb as the example, but I wanted to see if I could uh, kind of reverse the transform. So what I've done is figure out uh, if I set the add all the way up, 
and I'm mapping this to the mod wheel, but you can map it to any other CC as well if you had it on expression or whatever. Uh, add all the way up starts the bottom of the mod wheel sweep pretty darn close to 100. I can't get all the way up there, get up to 99. Uh, and then if you set the scale down to negative 100%, then it will uh, be an inverse range. So all the way down is 100% wet. And then as you bring it up, then it gets uh, dry. So that's how you can invert the range, which is useful to be able to do. Uh, thought that was worth mentioning. And then this third one I've got set up here, again, is just demonstrating the freeze, which I kind of already showed you. So I'm going to move over to this third channel strip here. And this is a couple of examples using the modulator. So what I'm going to show you first is the modulator plugin. Uh, it gives you an LFO and an envelope. And before, you used to just be able to map it to kind of goofy sounding stuff like mod wheel or expression or pan. It wasn't ever super useful in my opinion. But now, you can assign it to any plugin parameter on the channel strip, which is just pretty awesome. Let me clean that up here. All right, so let's turn this on here. So right now, I have assigned the LFO to the cutoff knob within auto filter. So it is modulating basically the auto filter cutoff in real time. And I can I have like total control over this. You can set the symmetry, you can change the waveform, uh, the shape of the LFO. You can set what triggers it if it runs every time you play, single time until you release all notes are free. Uh, you can adjust the rate, you can adjust how smooth it is. And then you can offset it either direction if you want it to lean more towards that zero or 100% option. So that's really cool. And on the other side you have this envelope that you can, uh, this is amazing, you can set uh, basically ADSR for the effect uh, however you wanted to set up. So right now I've got the envelope mapped to the wet uh, send of silver verb. So when I play a note here, the envelope starts. Um, let's see, why is that not catching? It's odd. Let's see what I got going on here. Make sure that I get this set up right. Pardon the delay. Okay. Uh, let's see. There we go. Okay, so learn plugin parameter uh, Silverbird. All right, now let's give it a go. There it is. auto filter off so all you hear is this so uh, sorry about that little bit of a hiccup there I'm still kind of getting acclimated to the full function of this but what this allows you to do is basically put any parameter on a channel strip on an envelope uh, so you have full LFO matrix and envelope matrix available for any parameter that's automatable on the channel strip which is EQs uh, dry wet time size anything you want uh, and so I can set the attack. I could have this sweep in over time. And then adjust how long it takes to release. Which is pretty awesome. Uh, and then I'm, you're able to set the max here, uh, or the minimum via the uh, offset here. So if you want it the lowest to go down to 25, then just set that to 25 or whatever. Um, so you have control of that range as well. Um, I haven't figured out how to invert this range yet. So I'm still kind of trying to work on that so that we start 
uh, high and kind of dip down. Um, but see if I can figure that out in the future. Uh, regardless, this is a really interesting effect. So what I've done here on this second one, I'll show you, is map the envelope to BitCrush uh, mix. So as I play, then this envelope takes over and it is modulating the mix of the bit crusher. Check this out. Okay, I don't know why <laughs> it is forgetting all of my all of my assignments. So maybe I've discovered my first glitch here. Oh, I know it's it's off. <laughs> Sorry, folks. This is my, my least professional video ever, but. We're all learning new things with 3.3, right? Uh, okay, here we go. This is it. So I'm able to start, as soon as I play a note, this mix goes up to 100% with no delay, and then slowly over time, comes back down. So, and I can adjust how quickly that takes in. It's it's just ADSR over literally almost everything in main stage, which is really, really awesome. Um, you could have it come in over time, so. And then fade out over time. Um, so you've got tons of options here and then you can also adjust how it is triggered. So yeah, that's a little bit of the new MIDI effects options in 3.3. Uh, sorry for the little bit of confusion in this video. I'm still trying to wrap my head around all of these new functions and how they interact with each other. Uh, but I'm really excited to see how far we can push this new functionality in main stage. If you have any ideas for how we can use this new functionality, I hope you'll leave the uh, leave your ideas in the comments so that other folks can see it and give your ideas a try. If you have any questions about how this works, I'd love to try and answer them as best I can. Just leave those in the comments as well. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.